inviting you to a workshop where you work on you. Welcome to Clarity Dojo. Work to connect to the best in the world to get clarity. Head over to claritydojo.com. You'll get the latest research techniques, examples, and it takes all of the guesswork out of which questions to ask in order to get the best insight. Get clarity and take action today. Welcome, Jacob O'Connor. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. Yeah, man, I'm glad. Thanks for having me on. So I'm just going to introduce you real quick. Um, Jacob interviews and discusses how to achieve high levels of success with top entrepreneurs, professional athletes, and high performers. Can you tell me how you got started with all that? Yeah, so you want the long version? You want kind of the short story of it? I think we'll. Uh, you can pick. I know that you have, um, you know, your next appointment right after this, so I don't want to keep you too long. Yeah, so I'll I'll um I'll give you a mix of the two. So really, my junior year of high school, I'm a senior for no who doesn't know, I'm senior high school. My junior year of high school, I got exposed to entrepreneurship through a program at my school called Startup. So Startup was basically an entrepreneurship program that allowed students to leave the school for the first two hours of the day and visit and tour different um, facilities and businesses and hear from guest speakers that run companies and whatever and whatnot. And so we did that. Um, my entire junior year, I did that. And we were tasked to hold our own events, to start our own little businesses. And we were, even, we were given seed money from the event that we held. We split it up amongst ourselves to start our own businesses and whatnot. And so that really kind of exposed me to the different opportunities that lie into business and that age doesn't really matter in this field. And so I did that and I created a product that was, it was a seat cushion for truck drivers to help with their back pain. And that had some relatively, um, relatively decent amount of success. And I, from that stemmed a internship that I worked over the summer with a local company that um, makes medical cushions for people in wheelchairs. So pretty similar to what I was doing. So I worked on that product development team all summer. And while I was working, I had a decent amount of time to listen to podcasts and to listen to music. And this kind of sparked an interest in myself. I would hear these people talking to some of my role models, like the, the late Kobe Bryant or um, Tony Robbins, people of this kind of statue that have been very successful and they found ways to separate themselves from other people. And so I was thinking like, why can't I do that? Why can't I talk to these people? Why can't I model kind of my own um, my own business model, my own career path after people who are doing something like this? And so I started to figure out how to do it. I started to figure out what steps I needed to take. So I built a website and then from there, I started interviewing people. From interviewing people, I then launched the podcast in September. And then since September of 2019, I've had about 75 interviews since then. Wow. 75 interviews. So what's your scheduling look like? How often are you interviewing? It is uh, pretty chaotic. I've had as much as four interviews in one day. Um, but I'm also in school. I also have sports. So I'll do interviews before school. I'll do them after school. I'll do them middle of the night, middle of the morning because I have some international people. It's whenever people can book a time, I make myself available. I love that. And um, that's very similar to how we set this up. I, I was um, on John Lee Dumas's um, email chain and uh, I, I picked up an article that that, that was um, you know written about you. And uh, I just found you either on your website or Instagram. And I, I think I DM'd you on Instagram like, hey, you know, this is how I found you. And uh, I'd love to interview you sometime. And you were instant to say, yeah, let's go. Let's, how about right now? <laughs> I love that. I love the let's go mentality. Um, and I'm a salesperson, too. I, I'm, uh, I'm a teacher and I'm also um, a real estate investor. And when you have an opportunity in real estate, you have to act like immediately and jump in it to that person, jumping on a call, getting to the location and having the conversation right when everybody's ready. Um, that's essential. So that's awesome. And, you know, kudos to you for, for um, jumping in on such a great program. Um, is that, was that run through your school? Is it like a district thing? Is it a local business thing? So I believe that, so startup is a byproduct of what's called, I think it's called CEO. And so the CEO program is all over Illinois. Um, I know that for a fact, and I think it's spreading to other states as well. Ah, well, I will certainly be looking into that. My goal is to connect people with their career as soon as possible. So I'm staring at students every day who are in in your shoes. You you know you're you're ready to light the world on fire. And um, 
somebody who who takes advantage of those opportunities and you know it makes themselves available and jumps on it right away finds success so fast and i know that you know listening to your podcast i've seen who you've been talking to and who you're, you're going to talk to and i know just from having those conversations you're pulling so much information that just you know changes the way that you think and you know sets you on a different trajectory so um you know, let me let me just talk to you a little bit about like mindset. Uh, you know, I know that you, you talk a lot about that on your podcast. Um, what's your like? What what is your game changer mindset? Like, where's that come from? Is there like a big why in there? Like, what are you thinking? Yeah. So, um, whenever I was younger, that basketball has always been a love that I've had. And so, what I one of the things I used to do was I would watch these highlight clips of basketball videos. And, you know, it would be the hyped up music at the background. It would be the motivational speaker in the background. And so I was always really drawn to that. So whenever I was low energy or something like that, I'd turn one of those on. And then, you know, as time progressed, I ended up thinking like, okay, like I'm getting hyped up from listening to this music and listening to these people speak. And so I, I talked, I was like, who are these people and who are these artists? And so I would then research, all right, who's the voice behind this video? And then I'd go onto YouTube, I'd type their name in and I found find that they have a million videos and I would just go through each one time after time and I didn't realize what was happening but now I have now I have the foresight to see it that I was slowly shifting my mindset it wasn't I yes I was doing it because I was getting this instant reaction of energy but what I was actually doing was I was changing how I was thinking totally as a whole yeah yeah I, I mean it's just that I the flow state when you can get yourself there and, and understand that about yourself, how you get into flow state, how you stay there, how you can trigger an, um, an awareness of it and an awareness of if you're being distracted or if you're low energy, like, I, you know, that's all stuff that top athletes, top performers are able to like, when they got to be on, they're on. And when they understand that they're, you know, in a state that they need to shift from one to another, you got to get there. And how do you get there? And, and, you know, knowing that about yourself, there's, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of psychology. I'm a fan of, you know, folks that you talked about, Tony Robbins. And, you know, I read a ton of books. I love Ty Lopez, book a day kind of mentality. Um, I think that, that he's, he's, he's the guy that kind of set me on my trajectory. Um, so I guess with all of these experiences that you're having and like building this new mindset, um, I'm just curious as to what you think is your favorite insight that you're pulling from all of this podcasting experience of all these top players. Yeah, so the, the I've, I've pulled a lot of different things from them, but the one that's always stuck out the most to me is actually came from someone who I've not yet interviewed, but I'm going to. Uh, he, my, he was my first mentor, Joe Capias. So he's a local businessman in Colombia. He's very successful. And one of the first things that he taught me was the power of just asking. And so um, whenever I was doing my seat cushion stuff, whenever I was in startup program, I was having a hard time getting materials. And so Mr. Capias would, I would, I would talk to him about my issue and he would say, well, why don't you reach out to these companies? You know, you're young, you have an idea. Why don't you just ask for them to help you? And so, you know, whether it's just asking for help, whether it's just asking for someone to teach you something, the importance of just asking was able to give me all of my materials for my cushion for free. The importance of just asking allowed me then to work that internship internship where I was paid all summer for a free idea that I had created. So from that mindset stemmed like, okay, I'm looking at these huge people and I, I've had a lot of success with getting remarkable people who are known to be notoriously busy and notoriously hard to land. I've, I've been able to get to my podcast with the mentality of, all right, I'm just going to ask. I'm just going to find an email. I'm just going to find their tag. I'm going to reach out to them. And I'm, I'm going to do this consistently. So through the mindset of just asking, I've been able to achieve conversations with very successful people. And um, it's kind of what I've modeled everything I do after. It's just, just try it, like just ask. Yeah, man, um, that action is, it, it goes so far. Uh, I believe you have a, a, a podcast episode where you're flying solo and you talk about how you landing top top folks. So we'll, we'll link that up in the show notes. Um, but man, I'm so proud of you dude like i'm pumped for you with what you got going on in your life your career it's just you know so inspiring and i hope that this kind of you know helps other people just ask it's so it's just that it, it's 
like zero to one. I don't know, like Peter Thiel, like if you've ever read anything, it's it's just, you know, from off to on and, and get off the fence. And, you know, what gets you off the fence, I think, is is the thing. So, um, you know, I love that that you're successful and and just asking and getting all this, um, you know, notoriety and, and uh, all these insightful things like I. I I did my best to, to binge your podcast and, you know, there's just so much gold nugget stuff there. So, you know, thank you for what you're doing. I'm sure that uh, folks that watch this w will um, benefit from your stuff, man. Man, I, I really appreciate that because, you know, when you get started with something like this and you look at how many people are listening and you see that there's two people out there listening and you know that one of them is you and the other one is a family member or something. <laughs> and then you hear that there's people that are actually listening to your show that you may not even know at this point. It, it's it's one of the best feelings. It, yes. It, and, you know, it, I, I agree. And put putting it out there and you never know who's listening. You never knew who this is going to help. Um, I, I've heard countless stories and, and, you know, it's that preparation meets opportunity moment where, you know, just the ask turns into something big for, for everybody involved. So, you know, this, this is cool. Um, Here's, here's a question I, I pose to my students to get them thinking, and it, it's an investment question, an investment of time. Um, we're only here for so long. I've had some recent, you know, major interruptions in life with family members and, you know, major, major health issues and, you know, people passing and, and that sort of thing. So when that stuff happens, it really, you know, changes things. It, it changes your mindset and it really it puts focus and perspective on to what we what the gift that we have with our time on earth so um i love this question what, what is the highest and best use of time on earth what do you think I, I would say you know and i'm only 18 so things may change over time but at this point in the game i would say do what gives you enjoyment do what you like to do and the reason that i say that it might sound kind of selfish off the bat is because the things that you get enjoyment the things that make you feel good a lot of times is connected to other people. So like, you know that when you give someone a compliment and they genuinely took it and like, you can tell that they're smiling, that they're gonna think about that the rest of the day, that makes you feel good. And so chances are when you're doing something that you really enjoy, whether it's podcasting, whether it's a sport, you're able to get into this flow state a lot quicker and you're able to, um, you're able to achieve and you're able to, um, you're able to be more successful and to attack something with a more willing grind towards it. And while you're doing that, at the same time, you're more willing to talk to other people. You're more willing to help other people. So when you do what makes you feel good, it's good for just not only yourself, but also other people. I agree. I, and I think that, that getting into your, you know, that that flow state of good feeling, um, I, I love um, – there, there's a book that I've been talking about. I, I wrote an article on the site about it. Um, it's Second Mountain, David Brooks. He's a New York Times writer. He, he teaches at Yale, I think. And, and he's just, you know, the, the book is, it puts a lot of things in perspective, uh, especially where I'm, where I'm at in life. I, I'm 39, turning 40 soon. Um, I'm, you know, I, I've had a very fulfilling career in, in education. Uh, I'm working on my real estate portfolio. I have a beautiful wife and daughter, you know, just in, in great shape in life. Um, but when these, these moments hit, it's like, you know, you're, you're working to it's two mountains. The first mountain is like what you want. So like you really want to like grow followers and build a brand and, you know, you're, you're building the podcast and you, you know, you're connecting and helping people and then you get there. And then it, he, he talks about that Valley. Cause there's some moments where you get to the thing you want and then it's like, well, is this it? And is, is that, you know, so there's that. And then there's the stuff where like life hits you hard and that has happened to me in quite a different number of ways. But I, I think that when you get to those really deep valleys, the lows, you, you start to understand what, what life's all about and who's important and what's important. And then, you know, the second part is like, that second mountain is, you know, all right, well, what truly matters? So that when, when I ask myself this question, I, I really feel like, like I'm a man of faith. You know, I, I, I'm a Christian. I believe in in being able to, to connect with people about that. And I'm not sure where that's going to take me. Sometimes the podcast takes me there. Sometimes I have interesting conversations with family and friends. Um, 
And then I also think that building a community. So I feel like a podcast is a way to build community and to, to like help people. Um, and there's also the idea of commitment he talks about in the book. And I think you have it in, in spades, man. You're just a rock star. Fully committed, just full committed, all out, all in, burn the boats. And, you know, you're, you're in it for a, the long haul. So, you know, kudos to, to everything you got going on. Um, you know, I, I love um, I love everything you got going on, man. This is uh, inspiring to talk to you right now. So let me let me just p- pivot now. So what I like to do on the podcast, and I'm, th- this can run long, so I'm, I'm going to bridge some of these questions, is model uh, the questions that I've come up with. I'm trying to get students to understand the power of asking. So you can ask questions to professionals in the field. So I have a course. It's called um, Career Clarity. So the website's claritydojo.com. Um, so head on over to claritydojo.com for instant access to shortcuts, um, showing exactly what to do with different research tools. There's email and question and script templates um, to help ask the right questions to the right people. So like once you're curious, then you pivot to use that curiosity to start asking questions and find the people that are doing the thing that you think you want to do. Um, basically trying to get to the best path in the least amount of time, which I know that you know is, is happening in your case. You got that going on with your podcast big time. So um, I'm just going to model those questions. So my first question that, that I would recommend is what what should somebody who does what you do, who's maybe trying to scale a podcast, who's trying to brand, who's trying to you know get, get into this line of, or, or profession, um, what would you recommend for training? Um, in terms of training, looking back, I think the hardest part for me was sitting behind a microphone and recording my voice because it's one thing to talk, um, it's one thing to talk with a person and just have a free flowing conversation. It's another thing to give a speech where you have a script out in front of you, but it's a third thing to sit here and to have a conversation that's recorded. Because for me, at least, when you hit that record button, it instantly changes. And sometimes you can get struck and overwhelmed by this fear of talking. So one of the biggest things that I would do, uh, that I would recommend for people to do, is just practice talking, like talking in front of a camera, like record it, but don't post it. Just practice sitting there, like having that pressure of like, okay, like I'm looking back at myself right now, I see myself talking and practice talking about something that you're passionate about. To sit there and look at yourself in front of the camera, in front of the mirror, on your drive to work, and just try and talk about something consistently for five minutes, have a conversation with yourself. And as dumb as this sounds, it's really helped me to be able to make things up on the spot and at the same time enhance my public speaking skills and also decrease a little bit of the anxiety and nervousness that I might have. I love that tip. Excellent. Um, next question, what are the resources, you, do you, what resources do you recommend? Do you have like websites, books, or podcasts that you would recommend? Um, let's see, in terms of just podcasting or in terms of overall like helping with this field of entrepreneurship and self-growth? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, in terms of podcasting, check out Seth Godin. He's got a lot of good stuff. Um, but everything else that I do is I have, I have a nightly routine. And one of the things I do is every night I have to either watch a video on podcasting or I have to read an article about podcasting, whether it's statistics, data, you know, different things to look at and consider. So that's something I do each night. And then another thing is I read books. I, uh, I try and keep a pace of about a book a week. You know, you're going to fall behind. It happens. But I, it's important to have that continued self-learning uh, to help you grow. Hey, man. Love it. I just want to put a pin in that. You said routine. So you're doing something daily, nightly. Um, I've heard in, in the podcast, uh, we had a former student of mine, Leah, she, she did Saturdays where she, she did training so that she could get a good PSAT score and she got a full ride to Liberty University. So, um, you know, it's, it's what's that training, what's the regimen that you can build and then commit, you, have, you stick to it, you, you go. So that, that's awesome. Uh, and thanks for the podcasts um, and the, the books. I love Seth as well. Seth Good is awesome. Um, any tools? or skills you recommend somebody who does this uh, acquire? Um, You need to acquire a good sense of humor. I think that uh, laughing and humor is the one thing that is able to bridge people like the best. 
is it's the interviews that I have where people might be super busy. And so like, I feel the entire time, like I need to rush through it. But the ones that I have where I can get someone to crack a smile or they make a joke, it instantly lightens the mood and it's such a better conversation. Yes. Agreed. That's something I feel like I always need work on. <laughs> I, uh, I, I usually get right to the point and uh, I think keeping it light is important in life. Um, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm still learning that too, man. Like I, I'm a lot farther into this than I was in the beginning, but like, it's still harder to cultivate it as more of a regular conversation than just a Q and a. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, the, the to keep the conversation going thing is, um, is important, but I, I think pulling, pulling out like the, the, the insightful moments, um, it, 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 I'm finding it pretty easy to do. I, like, I just kind of summarize, like when points hit, I like, I like to like, you know, just hit that. And then, um, I have a lot of questions, so I might need to tighten up the question set for podcast format. Um, I'm still, you know, still experimenting and uh, trying to make this thing helpful to, to people as best as possible. I don't know if the long format works or not, but I, I pull out little snippets of each and we do like a highlight podcast as well. Like you're, a, a YouTube you're video. Great, man. You're doing great. From what I can tell with this, you're, you're doing great, man. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, so this is kind of like a dual, dual sided question. Is there anything that you would recommend me to do? Or, and is there anything that you would recommend me not to do? Hmm. Let me think. I think that, I think you do a pretty good job of maintaining the conversation. I think that, um, sometimes, and I struggle with this in the beginning too, you might get a little bit focused on getting to specific questions. And, but I, I think that that comes with time. I don't think it's like a major impairment or anything for you. Okay. So, um, and then for like, if, if you were to recommend for like podcasters, is there anything that you would recommend them to do or not to do? Like if somebody wanted to get into this, this career? Mm -hmm. um, I would, okay, so in terms of follow up, I, I think that for people that wanna get into this, they need to be able to follow up with someone because they're gonna forget. They might have it on their schedule, they might have it on their calendar, but they're, they're very busy people and for them to make time for you, you need to be con uh, consistently reaching out and reminding them. And then once you have it posted, once you have it posted, you need to let them know it's out. And then after that, keep reaching back out, maintaining a conversation, keeping yourself relevant with them. And then, you know, making sure that they know that you're not just another person who's going to interview them and then never talk to them again. You're someone who's going to be more consistent and it's going to show them a lot about you. Yeah, I, I love that. Great, great tip. The, uh, the after conversation is just as important as uh, the podcast itself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to keep up with you and keep watching you grow and uh, you know, get up with you um, as the years progressed. Mm -hmm. So um, how about in advice for getting into like internships, um, perhaps maybe even meaningful work, something that's like career based while you're in high school? Okay. Yeah, with this, I think the biggest things that a high school, biggest thing a high school person can do is to start trying something. Like with me, it was making the seat cushion. It was the fact that this might not be the best product in the world, but I took the time to make it and I'm standing behind it. When someone sees that and someone older sees that, they're impressed. They may not look at this and say like, that's the best cushion ever, but they're going to look at it and say, hey, you took the time to do that. You took the time to put the work into it, to be detailed about it. And that's pretty cool. So if you're able to do that in this field, then I'm sure that that would translate if I gave you a job or if I gave you another opportunity, I'm sure you'd put that same care, maybe even more into something for me. So I think the biggest thing you can do is to just get out and to actually try something and to build up your resume with those things. Yeah, getting off the fence and um, getting into the game. Um, I guess, what, what would you say to somebody who is hesitant about doing something like that uh, i think everyone's hesitant about doing something like that like even myself in, in the beginning it's really hard to do something you feel like a fraud like that's the biggest and the hardest part is feeling like a fraud because you're trying to be someone that you're not yet and i think that regardless of what age you are a lot of people run into this issue and it's th it's just a little mindset change of not saying like i'm a fraud like i'm not this person but rather saying to yourself I'm in the process of becoming this person and achieving this feat. 
Yeah, I love that. That's definitely going to be one of those uh, gold nugget show notes for for me. I have. Um, I think I think that that is uh, kind of hits the nail on the head. Like the the fear of um, you know coming off in, in in a fraudulent way, and you know just I I think just being honest about that and saying this is this is where I am on my journey, and I appreciate your help. Um, uh, I, I may make yeah, owning up to not knowing everything is is one of those things too. So that's uh, that's you know act as if does help a little bit, but you know you, sometimes you don't know what you don't know, and you're you you, know, you 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 do your best to to figure it out and and you know be honest and communicate about it, about that when you're interacting with people. So you know especially when you're you're, you're trying to get that portfolio and and get into those those interesting um, job opportunities or, you know, what maybe just interesting opportunities doesn't have to necessarily be career. Um, okay. How about for um, scholarships and uh, financing college tuition? Do you have any tips, anything that you're, you're doing? Um, in terms of financing and scholarships for college, one of the biggest things I did was really go hard on the ACT. So the ACT is a terrible test. I'm sorry that people have to take it. It's incredibly hard for a lot of people. And it was very difficult for me. But one of the things that I did that actually helped out a bunch with my score was uh, I was set to be taking the ACT 50 days from when I bought an ACT practice book. And so for 50 days, I took this 1,000 page practice book and I went through the entire book in that 50 day period my score went up a bunch and it helped um, get me merit scholarships to every, to any college I want to go to it, mm. I, some sort of money for that. And so getting my ACT up was one of the biggest things I could do, but also in terms of financing college, another thing that I did was the podcast. I had something to show real world experience like this and it impresses a lot of people, especially I'm looking to go into entrepreneurship major. So the fact that I have a podcast, the fact that I'm able to, now tie my name to the people that I have interviewed and say that I have this experience. I've been able to do these things. That's act, that's got me scholarships that have equaled out or even been more than the merit scholarships. Boom. I love it. That's awesome. I think the, um, you know, again, commitment, get a book, 50 days, do it every day, get yeah. the score up, nail no, that. And now no, start a podcast. That is like, boom, next level, man. That was terrible. It was during the summer whenever I got the ACT book. And so what, what kid wants to sit at home and do that? So I would get home from my internship and I would be like, okay, I really want to go play basketball with my friends, but for the next hour, we're going to say, sit here and do this English test. And it was just, it was horrible, but I'm, I'm glad I did it. Sacrifice. And, and that's that highest and best use of time thing. If you got time and you know that, you know, you're going to have, you know, what this investment of time can do for a later thing, I mean that that's that's investment. You know, you have to you have to make those sacrifices sometimes. Put your capital, put your time and energy all at one thing, and then it turns into something. You know, a couple years down the road, and if you didn't do that, where would you be? I love that mind that mindset trick where it's like if if I did this once a day for 50 days, where would I be in 50 days? Versus if I didn't. And then, you know, you're just, it's making you aware of that choice and then, you know, start nailing down that choice and, and um, the compound effect. You ever read Darren Hardy, Compound Effect? If you haven't, check it out. Good, great book. That, that, that's one of those, you know, at least, at least twice a year I'm in my audio audible feed, I'm, you know, I, I refresh through that book. But yeah, it, it's like just constantly making good choices. Your, your good choices go exponential. Cool, man. Um, how about, and this, I think because of your podcasting, this is going to be a, a gold nugget thing. Um, I have best networking tip for college. Um, and I, you know, we can kind of like talk about best networking tip for college, best networking tip for career, best, best networking tip in general. I know you got them. Yeah. So the, the, be the best networking tip in general is just to reach out and become like have personal relationships. Don't make it just, Hey, we're friends on LinkedIn. So all of a sudden, like we're networked, no, like reach out and have a conversation with these people. Now I'm going to be a little bit biased. I'm going to say the best networking, networking thing you can do is start a podcast. 
And that is just because from all of the relationships that I have developed throughout the podcast, things have come from them that I would have never imagined. I didn't ask for them, but they were presented to me, whether it's working with someone on a project, whether it's, um, that's how I got my podcasting studio in downtown St. Louis um, from someone I interviewed. They loved what I was doing. They wanted to work with me. They offered me the space. That's how I, um, that's how I ended up winning a grant. That's how I'm going to be going to New York at the end of May to speak in an event. Like it's all these things that you come from networking. It's not some, some of it is what you know. A lot of it is what you know, but it's just as useful with who you know. And so I've been able to adapt the mindset of if I don't know how to do this thing, you can guarantee, I guarantee you, I know someone who does know how to do it. So I've been able to hyper-focus on one or two aspects of the podcast. And if there's something that I want to branch out with, I can reach out to this person or that person. They're able to help me with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's that Henry Ford quote. Um, if, I think he was on the, on the stand and uh, they they were interrogating him about his knowledge about cars. And he said, uh, you know, I don't need to know the answers to all of your technical questions. I just have a row of buttons on my desk that I push that summons the right person to answer those questions, which is, you know, that's networking. You, 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 you like put in the team together that has the skills to do the thing. That's, you know, that synergy is, is, um, is what makes the world go around, I think. So yeah, you do have to, you do have to show up and you do have to be talented yourself, but at the same time, you know, it, it does take a team. So, um, all right, that, that was awesome. Um, so I have best college success and, and best um, uh, worst college mistakes. So I, I love the flip side, like best and worst, and like what to do, what not to do kind of questions. So um, I don't know if you ha- like, do you have anything for either? Co- like I have I have the same thing for, for college and career. So this is assuming that, you know, somebody's already doing, you know, in college or already through college. But if you were to say, you know, what do you think your 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 best success is right now, and maybe what do you think your worst worst mistake would be? Um. Well, the, you know, interestingly, interestingly enough, with the worst mistake thing, I don't really look at it as like a worst mistake. I think of it as like a best failure kind of situation, to where it's not because I I've lost money doing things. I've tried to do different things that haven't worked out. Um, one of the, my first business thing I ever did actually, and I'll, I'll use this for an example, is I tried to do drop shipping online because that, that was hot. Everyone was doing it. You know, you saw the thing that was like, make a million dollars doing this, just pay me 500 for a uh, course or whatever it was. And so, you know, I ended up going along that route. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I didn't lose a large amount of money, but to me it was because I'm a teenager. I w- didn't have any income and it was my money that I had invested. And so that, that to me talking right there, like, first of all, if you're going to do something with business, you have to know what you're doing before you get started. You don't have to know all the aspects, but you got to have an idea of the course of action you're going to take and you have to have some sort of knowledge on it. And so that, that's what I learned from that. And then in terms of, um, best success, I, I think, you know, my best successes are still ahead of me, but recently one of the things that's helped me a lot is I won a grant for the podcast. And from the grant has stemmed different relationships. And because of the grant, I'm actually being flying out, flown out to New York at the end of May to go speak at their donor event. So that's something really big to me because traveling and speaking are two of the things that um, I, I want to intertwine with the career as well as, you know, it's just bucket list items. So th- those are two of the things right there. I love it. Um, what was the grant? Uh, it's the Hunter, Hunter Brooks Watson Fund. Memorial Grant. So I, I know it's a really long name, but uh, it's for people 16 to 25 who have some sort of entrepreneurial idea or some sort of vi- uh, venture they want to pursue. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So how did you get get to like that? Did that come to you or did you find it? So through the program, the startup program, my junior year, I had applied for it and I actually lost. But then once I started the podcast, I reapplied for it and won. Nice. Excellent. That's awesome. Um, I want to just gold nugget something there too. Maybe an insight piece that I, I just pulled. I don't know if you've seen on um, Netflix. There's there's a show called Abstract. It's it's um it's the art of design. I'm just staring at it right now. I just Google it real quick when you were saying that. But um, we we talked about it a little bit in in some of my classes. But one of the things that 
that stood out to me is many of the people that are on that show. So it kind of just follows like it follows people who are, are doing it big. So, you know, there's a, an architect, there's artists, there's all these designers, like the best in the world. And I, I love the, the idea, like one, one of the, the things in the course that I'm trying to, to influence people to, to try um, is who does it best in the world? And then can you talk to them? And then who, who's like, in the college that you want to go to and can you talk to them who's one year graduated and how are they doing after one year doing the thing that you know you're planning on studying who's five years out doing that thing so you know maybe in, in this instance who's got a podcast who's one year out of the podcast who's been doing it for five years who's doing it best in the world and can we contact them and talk to them um but one of the things that they t that they talk about on that the the netflix series is um or Basically, each each one of these people, they have won an award. So I think that that's one of those insight points. Like, could you find awards and submit and and get on the platform for next level? Like, where's that taking you? That's taking you to New York. That's giving you the speaking gig. Who you meet at that speaking gig could turn into your next thing. It's gotten you a podcast. Um, you said a podcast studio? You got a grant? Yeah, yeah. So um, one of my one of the people I interviewed, I ended up befriending, and he he runs a company downtown in St. Louis, and so he um, he thought it would be beneficial for us to renovate his conference room into a little makeshift studio for myself to do in person interviews and to have a place to go downtown to work on the weekends. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things that you got going on, and I, you know. I, like I said, I'm just proud of you, man. This is awesome. So good, good, good stuff. And, um, I hope to, um, to, to keep up and, uh, see what you're up to over the next couple of months. Cause you're moving fast, man. You, you said, what, when did you start this podcast? Last uh, September. September. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And that, that's big with some of the, the names on your reel. Um, so, um, where, where can we go to, uh, find out more information and listen to your podcast? Yeah, so um, I'm on Instagram at venture.mentality. I post daily insights from the things that I'm doing. I post interviews that I have. A lot of cool stuff's there. And then, of course, you can find my podcast on um, iTunes, on Spotify, anywhere where you can listen to podcasts. Just search Venture Mentality, and I'll be there. Excellent, man. Well, one more, I guess just your parting words for today. What, what would you say to, to, to folks to, to inspire them maybe to do a little bit more connecting and networking and um, maybe even to start a podcast? What would you say to somebody who aspires to maybe have a career like you have? Um, I think that one of the biggest driving factors for myself is looking at where I don't want to be and then heading in the opposite direction. So it, it's important not to dwell too much on like what you don't want to have in your life, but in Sometimes to find out where you want to go, you first have to figure out what you don't want. And so I always knew that I didn't want to live kind of a normal life because to me, normal is boring. So what I did is I, I found something that I enjoyed. And who knows, maybe I won't be doing this in five years. Maybe I won't enjoy it. But I can guarantee I will be going every day as hard as I am with this into something else. So it's finding something that's worth your energy and worth your time and fully committing to it. Because I don't think people, I don't think people realize what is possible when you fully commit to something, the amount of momentum and energy that you're able to generate, it is, it is remarkable. As I told you before, like, I feel like I was just at five listeners and then now, now it's starting to grow and gain a lot of momentum and starting to get big people and big opportunities. It just shows what can happen whenever you go all in and you're able to sacrifice, you're willing to sacrifice for it. Hey man, Jacob O'Connor, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much, Jacob. I really appreciate your time tonight and um, good luck with everything. Thank you. Take care now, bud. All right, thank you. Head over to ClarityDojo.com. You'll get the latest research techniques, examples, and it takes all of the guesswork out of which questions to ask in order to get the best insight. Get clarity and take action today.